I'm just gonna do a wrap up for the two messages that we have heard. They are all interconnected. <coughs> Whatever Wang Gang share about the life of Peter. Mm. Okay, not the life of Peter. But Elder Wang Gang share about the calling that Peter received when he first being called by Jesus and when Jesus called upon him again. You know, I remember Pastor say that he really liked the life of Peter. And if he had a son, he would want to call him Peter. So I tell you first, myself will be called Peter. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay. Right. Okay, no la. Okay, I, I also quite like the life of Peter. But actually I want to ask y'all this question. Why I like the life of Peter is because I see myself like Peter. A lot of times we are like Peter. And today it's more of confirmation. How much of Peter you see in yourself? It's something that I want we really receive today. The message is very deep. I, I must say I cannot um, I may not be able to deliver the true the very deep essence that Elder Wangang wanted to deliver on the stage. But I pray that <coughs> to what extent God revealed to us right now, to what extent God lead us, we just receive the most from it at the current moment. For this moment itself is led by God. So the whole Bible, right, in its essence, what does it talk about? If you were to summarize the entire Bible, what is the whole Bible to you? Vicky? It is the Bible to me. Yeah. If we, we always read the words. Pastor, whenever they start a sermon, they will tell you what are the verses that we are going to read today. And a lot of times we always go back to the verses. But why do we always want to go back to the verses? Why? What is the whole summary of the Bible itself? God's love and habit for his children. So, true. A lot of times when we read the word, right, it, it may be like um, you have one hour to deliver. Maybe you can only <coughs> deliver half an hour. Half an hour is the time we read the Bible. Um, but a lot of times, right, when we read the Bible, we need to know that the whole Bible talks about God's heartbeat. God, God's love. In essence, right, the whole Bible talks about love. And God's love and how His love is with us today through His Word. And therefore, because the Word is always with us, therefore, when we receive the Word, we receive His love. Therefore, the love resides in us. Okay, When we read the Bible, we read it receiving His love. We don't read it as a word. We read it with a word from a fatherly love. Okay. Only when you read the Bible like that, you will really know that this is a love letter from from your father. You know, I always tell you, my my father like to write, write those very chim letter in Chinese, traditional Chinese word. But every time, although I'm very scared to read his letter, but every time when I open his letter, I realize it's a fatherly love. I receive his love. I can feel his love. I think Miriam also will have letters from mommy, right? And, no, uh, I, I remember sometimes I saw Pastor Sarah pass some notes to, to to know who. Yeah. So <laughs> if if you ever receive letter, you also read it with love. Okay. So this Bible is your father's <coughs> love. Okay. It's, it's Jesus' love for you. So when you read, you're really receiving his love. And... And... It's only when you know the love that God is talking about and can deeply experience it, can you then have the ability to love another man. Actually, I was trying to think um, what, what Elder Wangan was trying to drive at. Ultimately, right, the whole Christian living, living, it talks about love. And it is not something that we need to use great strength to do. It's not like, I force myself to love Daphne. Like, even though Daphne, he, her look and my look is so different. We have different blood groups. Sometimes I also don't like the way she behaves. I also don't like the way Eugene behaves. I also don't like the way um, Dong Han, they all behave. But, but what God is trying to... But why God gave us this word? Because God gave us the standard of Christ. God gave us the standard of love. He himself is love. Only when, only when you believe in the word and his word, and being led by it, can you then have the ability to love people who are different from you? So, um, how do you know that 
How do you know that you are receiving the love from God in its fullness? Is when you detect that you can love the person beside you more and more. Actually, if honestly speaking, I was just asking myself, have I loved the people beside me more and more as time goes by? Then I start to ask myself, mm. how about my cell group people? Like when I look at your lives, right? One thing I cannot deny is there's growing love in all of you. And I always ask myself, but where this love comes from is from you knowing more and more of God's heartbeat to you. It's from how you comprehend God is interceding for you. He's leading you. So love comes naturally from you. It's not something you have to force yourself. It is something that because you have received much, therefore you can love much. So when we receive the word again and again, right? Don't be a don't be a church goer. Be a person who can detect the transformation in our inner beings brought upon by the word of God. So what transformation we are talking about? Mm. So with this I want us to read the Bible, to read the letter of love from our Father. Let's flip at uh, Luke chapter 5. So last week we talked about Luke chapter 5. And this Luke chapter 5, um, I just want to recap with you all. This was on the day when Jesus called upon uh, Simon Peter. So one day Jesus was standing by the, by the lake of Gennesaret. The people were crowding around him and listening to the word. But despite there's a crowd, a, a lot of crowd before him, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon. So God is very definite and and he knows his direction. He knows his shape. So he go directly to the boat belonging to Simon and asked him to put up a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. So when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. But then Simon answered, Master, we have worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. So when he did that, he saw a large number of fish that their nets began to break. And then, um, verse 8, Simon Peter saw this and he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. A lot of times we also will say this to God. God, you go away from me. I don't deserve your love. So, so a lot of times we are also like Peter. We see our sinful nature. Then we ask God to leave us because we are not deserving. And then, but what Jesus said to Simon, he said, don't be afraid. Okay, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So fish for people means you will be capturing people's souls. You will be earning people's souls. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything and followed him. So this is the first transformation we all received like Peter. We all had a transformation that is very similar to Peter. We once know, heard, heard the grace of God. And then we can recognize that, Lord, you are my Lord. And then apart from you, I have nothing. No good thing. So we, we all had been like Peter, left everything and follow God. And this is the imprint of the first grace God given us. Because this grace, what does this grace do? This grace made us conscious of our sins. This grace made us conscious of God is sovereign and God is the one who give. God is the one who gave Peter the fish. God is the one who wants to come and find you. And then because we know that apart from him, we can do nothing. So we surrender everything and we follow him. So this is receiving God's unconditional love. The first transformation. We all had experienced this before. We all know that, Lord, you are all we need in our life before. But then, but then what happened afterwards? So then Peter said, uh, you know, when, when they were having the last supper together, Peter said, uh, Jesus, I will lay my life for you. So he said that he will lay my life for you. And he's not faking it when he said that because he really had decided to left everything and follow him. But then despite so, despite he said, Lord, I will die for you, what happened 
the very moment is he fell. He fell by denying God three times. And and then what happened? So after he denied God three times, Jesus was then uh, brought into captivity, was being tortured, and then was being nailed on the cross, and he died and resurrected. So I'm giving you a snapshot because I want to bring you to the, to the next scripture that we want to read today. So let's turn to John, book of John, uh, chapter 21. Again, we are not unfamiliar, okay? So, chapter 21, verse 1, it says, Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciple by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. So, you, you see, uh, Simon Peter to Thomas, Nathanael from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples, they were together. And then Simon Peter said, I'm going out to fish. Um, then the disciples the rest of the disciples says, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night, they caught nothing. So what did Peter do is, after he had denied God, after God had died, he, he, he although God has asked him to leave everything and follow him, what Simon Peter did is, he went back to fishing again because he had denied God. It's like everything has come crashing down for him. He already denied the Lord he chose to follow. But what happened is that early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. When he stood on the shore, the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. So Jesus called out to them, Friends, have, haven't you had any fish? No, they answered. So God says, Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to hold the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him and jumped into the water. Okay, let's take some time to read this. You know, the first time when Jesus came to find Peter is also by fishing, right? The second time, the second time the, the disciples did not recognize him. But what Jesus told them to do is go and catch the fish again by throwing down the nets. And then they found that there's a lot of fish. And God used the same method. And then when he used the same method, suddenly the disciples realized this is the method of the Lord who used to call them. And then they say, it's the Lord. It's only then that they realize it's the Lord. Then what Simon Peter did is, he quickly jumped into the water and then he went to Jesus. And Jesus asked them to bring the fish they had caught and come and have breakfast with them. And then verse 15, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, okay, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Okay, I will explain a bit more from what I gathered. I used to be unable to finish, uh, to really understand this, this part. Because to me, it sounds like God is asking three questions. Uh, the same questions three times but the first time God says do you love me more than, more than this then Peter knows that so this the first one God is talking about unconditional love can you love me unconditionally but Simon Peter knowing that he had denied God he said God you know me I love you then Jesus said feed my lambs then again Jesus said do you love me he answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Why did Simon not say, Yes, Lord, I love you? Why did Simon Peter say, You know that I love you? So actually, I didn't realize this part until Wakam uh, Tao, he said a bit. Then I realized, yeah, oh. He is actually asking God to be, actually, like, for example, if Daphne asked me, Daphne asked me, Which one do you love me? Actually, I don't really love her. But I think she knows I don't really love her. So I will say, you know that I don't love you. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think, I think at this part, right, actually Peter is actually calling out for God's understanding also. You know that, you know that I love you. My kind of love to you. But Jesus said the same thing. Take care of my sheep. And then the third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, 
Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Later we share about this a bit more. And then Jesus said the same thing. Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went, that, went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. And then he said to him, follow me. Okay. Um, so this is the second transformation in Peter's life. And the question I'm going to ask is, do we have this second transformation in our lives? Um, many times, right, like what Peter told uh, God, I will die for you. We are also like, like Peter. We also once proclaimed that we will serve Lord. We will serve Lord and, and take care of people whom God loves. It's not that we are faking it. We genuinely want it, right? Mm. Like, like definitely you genuinely want to do for God also, right? You genuinely want to love whom God loves, right? You genuinely also want to serve Him. But a lot of times, right, despite, why did God say, the place that I'm going, at the, at the Last Supper, the place I'm going, you cannot go with me, but you'll come to me later. What is the reason? Um, this makes me think a bit more. What is the reason God says, the place I'm going now, you cannot follow me? It's because, right, it's because God really knows the spiritual battle that we are facing every day. And God really knows what we are experiencing every day. And, and a lot of times, right, if you look at our own brethren, a lot of brethren, they can, they also want to fervently serve the Lord because they already know that the Lord is all they need. But why, do, when they have the ferventness, why, why is it the first thing the pastor never do is give them a serving? Like for example, um, when when a sister comes to Christ, very fervent, but you realize in their ferventness, they say they want to follow the Lord. What the church do is we wait upon them. We continue to give them the word. We continue to equip equip them. But what we not do is we never ask them to go into ushering. We never ask them to go into ministry. We never ask them to do this. We never ask them to participate. It is because, right? It is because God is the initiator. And when someone just had the first transformation, she is also undergoing a lot of spiritual battles. Spiritual battles, when you are made conscious of sins, there will be a lot of spiritual battles that's in your life. That is why I, I realized that perhaps that is why Lord tell Peter, the place I'm going, you will not be able to follow me now, but you will be able to follow me later. That is why pastor always don't get too hurried into giving you a lot of serving, giving a, a lot of like fervent Christians a lot of serving. It's because there's timetable, there's timetable to their to how much they can comprehend follow me okay so but when when God the second time even even though after Simon Peter had denied God even even though he had gone back to his fishing when Jesus came to find him right you realize that you, you realize that um, Peter Peter never tell Jesus sorry I deny you three times you also never hear you also never read about Peter, um, Jesus come and tell him, Peter, uh, my love son, why you deny me three times? So a lot of times, I, I, I also w was a bit guilty. I was a bit guilty sometimes when pastor, I wonder whether pastor will tell me, Hui Zhen, uh, why are you so weak? Uh? I already give you a lot, of, uh, a lot of help. Why are you still so weak? Why you cannot shepherd those that you need to shepherd? Why do you not see God's love? So sometimes, right, we always have our ideals like how God will come and find us. But if you read at this scripture, right, when God come and find Peter, he come and find Peter knowing that there was weaknesses in Peter. But he never looked at Peter's weaknesses there. So what did what did God do is he used the same method. Oh, he used the same method to tell Peter that I have not left you. Okay? Many times we are away from God continue with our daily affair, continue to go to work, continue to, to go to school. But we realize that mm, Jesus, God is always coming to find us with the same method. What method? The method is with his word. But what is in addition to his word? He come and find us 
making the Holy Spirit inside us to work according to His word. And there's a difference in the second transformation. The second transformation comes when the Holy Spirit is working in you. Then you will be able to truly see that the Lord is really all you need. What you need is just carry your cross and follow the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit reminds you with the first word that God first gave you the salvation grace. Okay, so Jesus, what what I realized from the entire scripture that um, we're going to share last week is Jesus waited upon Peter. Jesus waited, waited upon Peter to realize it is Lord. When he catched a lot of fish, he realized this was the same method someone used to call him. So he waited upon Peter to realize, to come to senses, and to eventually follow God willingly to the end. Um, sometimes I... I, I don't know why the scripture never described more. Like when Peter plunged into the water and swim to Jesus, right? Um, why did he not come and say sorry to, to Jesus? Sorry, God, I have denied you. But I realize that is what a lot of time we did. God, sorry, we have denied you. We always come and bring out our sins. But but then I realize that Peter never, never say his denial in front of Jesus, even though that is... The turning point in his life is because he knows that his sins is always before him. Just like us, our sin is always before us. Our pleasure of the eyes, our wanting to want to put down others to uplift ourselves, our wanting to take pleasure in a lot, a lot of things in this world. A lot of times, this is before us. But what Jesus was looking at is always not at this thing. It's always, Peter, you come back to me. Okay, so sometimes I think that's all a soul need is to stand before the presence of God. Okay, and mm, what what I want to drive a point to you is understand the story of Peter. When Peter needed to understand that although he had forsaken Christ, but Christ had not forsaken him. And this is something that we really need to drill in our life. Because if you drill it correctly in your life, you won't take it for granted. You will not take it for granted for God's, uh, for Jesus' death and resurrection. You know, a lot of times, right, things happen every day. Like Han Ho mentioned about the riots. Riots come. Success come. Cultures come. Today you have a new Korean series. Tomorrow you have a new Korean series also. Then after that, I will have a Thai series that I like also. So, Things happen every day, every day. But what is the background of all these things? Despite these wars, riots, people getting married when time comes, people getting fame, people having successes. But one thing that's unchanged is God is still preparing the vessels he can use. Just like God is still preparing Peter. Peter needed to go through the deniers before he can really be used by God. Just like the experiences that we are having right now, it's something that we need to go through. But you need to know why God asks us to go through this. It's because He's preparing us to be the vessels. Why God needed to give you this friendship problem? Why God needed to give you this career problem? Why God needed to give you this relationship problem? It is because a lot of people, they do not have the answers. And God is need, God needs to prepare the vessels. And the one who is his vessels is the one who see their calling. Okay, we really need to see our problems not with a microscope. We really need to see our problems with God's eyes. What what the microscope do is I I remember my biology class. Biology class is it always go into very very detailed on the slice the the screenshot in front of us. So it magnify our problems. It magnify the things right in front of us. But God is actually seeing, seeing every day of our lives in a bigger eyes, in a heavenly eyes. He is very purposeful in his leading. I cannot emphasize more. Okay, so before, just like, just like when Jesus come and call Peter, right? Does he not know that Peter has the weakness? Does he not know that Peter will fail him? He knew it right from the beginning. Okay, but why did the weakness come? Only after 
Peter chose to follow God. Why did the denier only come he, after he decided to follow God in his life? It's because God wants to uncover the sins inside us, the stumbling block inside us, that will really impede us from following God. So God really needed to give you this thorn. God needed to give Peter this thorn. Okay? The failure in Peter is to drive him to drive him to be used by God. Okay? We really need to understand what it means, what it, what it means by the power of God's salvation on the cross. The power of the precious blood. Okay. Um, you know, when, when we understand death and resurrection, right, we need to understand it didn't happen for Peter, it didn't happen for the people back then, it happened for us now. Why, what it means by dying? To die, you must first live, okay? You cannot die if you haven't lived. Jesus died, how did he die? He died by first becoming a man, okay? Why did he need to become a man? Why do we need to read the Bible? Why do we need to read the Sermon on the Mount? Why do we need to read so much teachings of Jesus? It's because he came to show us the character of God, to show us how close we can be with our Father in heaven. He came to show us that he also can be tempted in his flesh. He devil also left no mercy to Jesus. Devil left no mercy to him because he kept tempting him as well. But what did Jesus know is his calling. His calling is to show to the others how Father is leading him in his life. So we need to know that what is the meaning of death and resurrection? The death and resurrection of Jesus tell us that you have a creator. You have a creator and you see yourself from the creator manual, not from the Satan's manual, not from what the culture that the Satan has built. Okay, And it's only when you see yourself from the creator manual, you can discern what is from God and what is from Satan. And what did the precious blood, what did the death and resurrection do is, it, it helps us to see people with God's conviction, not with our self-conviction. Um, a lot of times, right, we always like to see men with our righteousness. But what what did the death and resurrection tells us is nothing in you are righteousness. There's nothing in us that is righteous. But if you are someone who is poor in spirit, if you are someone who cannot deny God, you who, who, if you are someone who cannot deny that you need God in your life, you are someone who is convicted by God. Okay? So our sense of righteousness need to tear down completely. Okay? And then what did Jesus do is he washed people's feet. Why did he need to wash people's feet? Because why did why did why did Jesus want to wash people's feet? Why did Jesus want to come to the prostitute? Why did Jesus want to call Matthew to, to come to follow him? The tax collector, the people people despise the most in the in the in that period of time. It is because God wants to tell us something. It is because God wants us to see the others around you with God's words, with God's word in it, not with your spiritual eyes, not with yourself, with not with what you understand of that person. So, and, and, um, you know what Wen Kang told us last week is, the cross, right, is not, we always like to say this is precious blood, but another part of us, we say that this is actually cheap blood. We always say so often that it is a cheap blood. But uh, just remember one thing from, from this precious blood. A precious blood like this, right, is necessary in your life. Because no matter what terrible sins, no matter how powerless you are, no matter how in disobedience we are, right, right there in your bondage, right there at the crux of the Satan, the Satan's head is crushed. The Satan's head is crushed. So, but if you do not accept God's sovereign in your life, if you do not know that your problems, your your un, your inability to submit to God's conviction inside you, right? Is you are you are the one who is rejecting God's love. So, when we when we say God, I need you, right? 
need the right thing. You need the precious blood. You need to accept his love, not to reject his love. Okay? And his love is there in your problem. The problem in front of you where your sin, where the Satan's bondage is, is where his love is. Okay. Mm. And I today I'm just gonna talk about Peter's story because I also don't have time to prepare a lot. But what did Peter's story tells you is imagine you're in the shoe of Peter, right? If you have denied God three times and God come and find you, I think one thing that is overwhelmed in my heart will be the great gratitude of forgiveness. I think. Um, I think what Peter would be experiencing then, if I put myself into his, his shoes, right, is why God can forgive someone like me. The grace of forgiveness, you know how huge is this or not? So huge that Peter can no longer go back to fishing. The sense of gratitude, the sense of broken down that he had when Jesus came to find him, is actually very powerful. Similarly, your brokenness when you come back to find Jesus is also very powerful. It can bring you another transformation in life. It can bring you to follow God to the end. Okay, and when God needed Peter to fail, it's because he wants Peter to comprehend this unconditional love of God. So that so that when he receives this love, he can love others unconditionally. That is why. That would be the book of Peter, subsequently. And, and then only Peter realized that nothing he does is able, he, he cannot do anything anymore unless it is Holy Spirit led. So, and the converse is also true. Holy Spirit can only work when you, bro when you break yourself down, when you deny yourself. And I think this is also the mystery of the precious blood. So, but a lot of times, right, we also will have our failures. We also will have our weaknesses. We also will have our lukewarmness. Like Peter will go back to fishing. But no matter what happened, Wang Gang was sharing, if you have someone around you who are in lukewarmness, what should you do? Actually, right, I also thought about this question before. If my, if my loved ones are lukewarm in Christ, what can I do? Then I only have one conclusion, and I think I shared with Randy before. I cannot do anything. I only can wait for Holy Spirit to work. Because if Holy Spirit don't work, I cannot work. Okay. So then, what is the thing that you can do? If you find yourself lukewarm, if you find other people lukewarm, what you can do is keep immersing yourself in the complete gospel. Okay. Receive the word. Receive the complete word. If you yourself already 50%, you receive, you don't immerse yourself in the right environment to receive the complete gospel. Then your 50%, you receive 20%. Then you become 30%. Okay. But in for someone in their lukewarmness, how they come out of their lukewarmness is they keep receiving the same word. Just like Jesus keeps asking Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Two times. Do you agape me? Do you agape me? Okay. God will never reduce his intensity. So if God don't reduce his intensity, we also shouldn't reduce our intensity. We still need to receive the complete gospel, equip ourselves with the complete gospel. And the complete gospel will make the Holy Spirit work in the hearts and minds. So then only you'll be reminded of the calling of God. Then only when Peter, when he's being asked to do the same thing again when he catch a lot of fish then only he'll be reminded that is Jesus that is how Holy Spirit works he works according to the word that you receive and then if you are lukewarm I pray for you and I pray for myself we listen to the Holy Spirit voice inside us it has never left whether you are unconscious conscious or subconscious about it and it's only when you listen to the Holy Spirit only when you listen to Holy Spirit's drive that you go into submission that the start of healing comes. Okay, so lastly, I want to end soon. 
I was just thinking, why Jesus asked Peter, do you agape me? So, to interpret this part, right, the first two times when Jesus asked him is, Peter, do you agape me? Then Jesus say, uh, then Simon say, Lord, you know me, you know I love you. So, then, then Jesus said, you feed my lambs. So, actually, after you have listened to this part, right, it just means that, right, actually Jesus wants us to love him unconditionally. Can we ever love Jesus unconditionally? Kira? Can you ever love Jesus unconditionally? That means, if Jesus today tell you, Mirel, you will be barren the whole life. You won't have kids, you won't have children. You won't have 14 kids, not even one kid. Will you love it unconditionally? Why? Actually, yeah, it's true. You cannot not love already. Because God is true in your life. You already know that aside from Him, you can do nothing. But, but what I want to say is, right, when God desires His people to love Him unconditionally, right, it's because He knows that you can love Him unconditionally. Why did Jesus say, you agape me? It's because He knows that you can actually agape Him. Why God give us the word? Because he knows that we can absolutely stick onto the word. So, when God asked Jesus, Peter, you can, can you agape me? It's because he knows that Peter can agape him. But what he wants is, he wants Peter to realize and receive God's love. Then only, then only he can reciprocate. When you receive much, when, you, when, the, when Jesus fills you in your life to the brim, only it can flow out. You know, when a cup, right, it has its volume. When you are filled with so much, then only it will overflow. And such is the love of God in you. Okay, You absolutely have the intrinsic ability to love unconditionally. So, um, and that's why, I, that's why I really, really recognize that following God is not proactive. It is really passive. You are led into it. You are not forcing yourself into it. Okay. And and I think mm, so so why did so when the first calling come, right? So when we just now read in the book of Luke, when Jesus challenged Peter and asked him to follow him, that is Jesus telling him God loves, okay, I love you, Peter. But the second time is when G, when Peter say, I love you, Lord, is, is when the third time when he say, when he felt so hurt, why why did Jesus say agape two times? After that, decided to say, Peter, do you feel me? Okay, that time, then, then just now we read, he felt a bit hurt. And I was just wondering why he felt so hurt since he, since, Jesus knows him so well, he actually don't need to feel so hurt. And right now, I still do not comprehend it totally. But if I if I were to imagine it, I think it's because when when he says filial, right, this filial is also a form of unconditional love that he, he has recognized. Why do I say so is, the first time, right, when he say, Jesus, you know that I love you. Why did he say you know that? It's because, it's, it's because that he is actually appealing to Jesus. He said, God, you know that what I have done. You know that I have my sins always before me. You know that I will want to love you. And I will want to love you the way you love me. But then what did Jesus reply is, he, he actually accept, accept this reply from Peter. He, he accept already. Then what did he say? You tend my lambs. Why? why and... And why did Jesus ask someone like Peter to tend his lambs? What is lambs? Lambs is a bit different from sheep. Lambs is the smaller one, the, the more young, immature kind. What, 
What did Jesus want to tell him is, you, yes, you are weak, but you continue to tend my lambs. Just, it is like, a lot of times, it's, I think it is like, pastor, pastor, he also has his own weaknesses, but God keep telling pastor, like, you tend my lambs. Lambs is like, we are all, who know a lot of things, we are immature, we are bound to fall, we also, will a lot of time abide with our flesh. But, but one consistent message that Jesus gave is, you tend my lambs. And then Jesus went on asking, do you love me? And then, and then what did, what did Peter say? Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Okay. And then after that, only Jesus said the same thing. You tend my sheep. You realize that God will never reduce his standard of blessings that he wants to give you. He not only tend the lambs, you tend my sheep. Then after that, the third times when when Peter was so broken, right? And I, I really can recognize that he must truly be broken. He must be truly broken by the extent of God never giving up on him. Why did he why did Jesus keep asking him this kind of thing? And then I realized that this is a restoration that Jesus <coughs> wanted to give Peter. Say, like, Peter, you are weak, but you continue to tell my lambs. Yes, Peter, I know. You continue to feed my sheep. Yes, Peter, I know. This is when I, I want you to know that you cannot follow Jesus in your own strength. You need to con you need to realize that Holy Spirit inside you will stir you to work. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit inside you will lead you to wherever I want to send you to go. And this is the start of restoration in Peter. And I think this is also the start of his discipleship training with, with Jesus again. That he can really go to the ends of the world, carry his own cross. And this is the moment he can start his own. He, he can start to assume he got no other choice but to put up his cross. If he don't take up his cross, he will feel even worse off. And then only he recognized that following to Jesus to the end is the only way in life. Okay, and and um, to end right, I just want to say a lot of times we are also like Peter. We we have our own cross that we deny. We didn't want to carry it on our own. Like I used to don't want to carry the single hook cross. Like now I don't want to carry the not a pharmacist cross. <laughs> but maybe you also have your own cross. You whatever cross that you are carrying, right? You just remember whatever cross you are carrying is because you absolutely have the ability to carry this cross. That's why God let you go through this. But in the in the process you might have a lot of setbacks. Like Peter, he might deny God a lot of times. He might went astray. But just remember that the second transformation that God wants to bring in your life is you can love God unconditionally when you face God alone, when you restore the same heart, same spirit with Jesus. This is between you and God. This is No one will judge you if you not carry your own cross. But you will know that your happiness lies in nowhere else but to carry your own cross. Because the rewards is between you and God. The rewards is also between you and God. It's not between you and others. It's not between you and your brothers and sisters. So, don't focus on our inability. For, because what we need to go through is we need to go through the brokenness that Peter had gone through. We need to go through the fall, the, the fall stage that Peter had gone through. And I think his denial of God three times is crucial to make him understand that all believers are like him, is as weak as him, and need as much grace as Peter as well. We all need as much grace as Peter. We need God to come and find us again and again. Okay, and whatever. Um, so to end, right? A lot of times, right? Mm -hmm. You. I think we all know that if we don't carry our own cross, we will only feel more out of place. We will feel that our life is not complete because we are just not joyful. A person who is joyful, she is carrying her own cross because, because she knows that she faces Lord in all she does. 
whatever she received from men, she she can face a lot in it. And there's this recipe therapist in my ICU. I thought of sharing his story with you. There was once the consultant asked him, if I want you to pull out the breathing tube for my patient, because I don't I want to stop resuscitating him. Knowing that he is a Christian, knowing that he's a recipe therapist. A recipe therapist has no power to terminate a person's life. But but what the recipe therapist and, and my consultant asked him this question is because he knows that he's a Christian. And and a lot of therapists will say that you ask other people to do it. But what what this therapist say really convict me a lot. He say, um, I will still do because you are my you are my consultant. I follow your instructions. You are God gave you an authority authority to 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 control me. An authority to give me instructions. Um, then how are you gonna deal with your conscience, your your what you have done, the sins that you have committed? So my consultant asked him, and I think you all know which consultant I'm talking about. So what that man say really convicted me a lot. He say to follow the instructions is given by God because He put me under you, but to terminate the life is not my desire. I will have to go back and face my Lord and deal with it. This is between me and my God. And the moment I hear him, right, I find I find that God really loves me because He God is giving a message. See, my children, a lot of times we thought that we need to earn people's respect. We thought that we need to earn people's recognition. We thought that we need to live like what others want us, want us to live like. But it's between you and God. But what is so evident that you really have a between you and God relationship is are you joyful? If you are not joyful, don't dwell in your unjoyful spirit. Go to God and settle it with Him. Is it something inside you that you find yourself cannot obey, submit him to submit to the end, then I truly, truly pray that you can submit to him to the end. Because you already know there's no other joy than following Lord to the end. Okay. And continue to live in God's words. It gives you the power, the strength, the courage you need to submit. Because God's word bring about tearing down. But God God's word also bring about building up. Okay, so only when you confirm it again and again that you really, really have, can carry your own cross happily. You need not to be hee hee ha ha the whole life, but you will know that you can be sorrowful yet always rejoicing. Okay, you can know that why Paul has a thorn in him yet he can always look upon the Lord. There is joy in carrying your own cross, and this joy is is far more than what you think remaining in your disobedience and disobedience is not scary but remaining disobedience and feeling sad and not happy is scary okay and then we truly live in God's plan today and every day when Peter lived in God's plan daily every day oh he really can die for God he really can die on the cross Last time, he, he, he is the one who denied God. But one day, he is the one who, who can be crucified upside down for God. But how did he ever envision himself to be able to do that? And then I realized this tiny grace, tiny providence. We, didn't, we do not need to envision what happened 20 years down the road when Jesus came. What, what are we doing? Just need to live today. When God come and find Peter, right? He, he already prayed for Peter. He already prayed for Peter. That's why when Peter, he is being deceived and denied God three times. God already knew it. If God, God already knew your weaknesses, then you don't need to worry about your tomorrow. You live in your today with God's tiny providence. And and when can we unconditionally love someone? It's when you pray about, you truly pray about their lives. You pr- you truly pray for their souls. When you are concerned about their souls more than your own, more than your own ugliness, more than your own comfort, then only you have the ability to love other people unconditionally. And then I realized that why pastor can love 
creature hui jin i realized that there's a different chemistry between caster and hui jin it's because hui jin is his shape okay when she was in her brokenness caster gave her a lot of words and then and then i truly can comprehend why out of young say if it's your own shape you definitely have the ability to love her unconditionally you definitely will make arrangement well for her you definitely will be very meticulous in what is her liking what is her future is going to be like you will plan for her you will pray for her you will want to confirm again again god's will in her life so god gave us shape god only god doesn't only give leaders in the church shape god doesn't only give pastor shape god gave you shape your ship is right beside you pray for them be very meticulous in praying for your ship then you will really know what it means to love unconditionally